I'm Wendy, a relationship specialist. I'd like to welcome you to Love, Listen, Talk, Repeat, a podcast that talks all about relationships. They come in all shapes and sizes, and each one's unique. So in this podcast, I chat with guests about life events and issues that can affect relationships, as well as discussing different types of relationships that may not always fit the mould of being mainstream. There will also be some episodes where it's just me talking about something that may be helpful in your relationship. So for now, just sit back and enjoy. Today I'm going to introduce Beatrice Smith. I hope I've pronounced it correctly, Beatrice. Um, I'm not very good with uh, names necessarily. I have got caught out in the past. Um, she is a sleep coach, speaker, and author of The Sleep Deep Method and founder of The Sleep Deep Practice. Now, we all know that sleep is an issue for all of us. We all need it to be healthy. But I'm going to pass you over to Beatrix so she can tell us more about it because she's an expert about it. So, hello, Beatrix. Hi, Wendy. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast here today. Um, Yes, we know sleep is a big part of our life, but unfortunately, a big percentage of us struggle with it. And that's where my, my story and my background starts is I struggled with insomnia in my mid twenties to the point where I used to wake up with bleeding nose at night consistently. No. Yes. I just, I just exhausted myself and I didn't really know it was happening because in our twenties we do so much more and we just crack on with things And my lifestyle was, you know, enjoying all that London had to offer. I'm originally from Hungary. So when I moved Mm -hmm. here, the world opened up to me. And I just pushed my boundaries to a level where my body couldn't handle it anymore. And that was my wake-up call. In the middle of the night, waking up with bleeding nose. And I thought, this is not normal. This shouldn't be happening in my mid-20s. Mm. So basically, um, then I spent the next 10 years up until even today researching sleep, finding out how I can improve my sleep, how can I get over my insomnia, my sleep problems, and turn my life around really. Uh, Because sleep is much more than just about sleep. So many different elements of our life affects it and vice versa. Um, And I think this is where the Sleep Deep Method came uh, from. It's my own research. And then other people asking about what have you done because they could see the change in me. And then over the years, I started working with people. And today, I work with people in my private practice, um, generally uh, senior executive CEOs, under a lot of pressure often in their jobs, in their lifestyles that they have created. And help them to put micro habits in, change their every days little by little, one step at a time, so that they can start improving their sleep little by little. Yeah. And I guess when you're in a high powered job like a CEO, you're never switching off. I mean, I'm, I don't think anyway, we, you know, generally we can be in that situation, but that's, there's a real pressure there because the demands on you are constant, aren't they? Yes. And I think the other part of this is not just, you know, how powered executives, but we all want to do well in life. Yeah. And we, we tend to put that pressure on ourselves And I don't know how many people you might have come across. I come across them all the time who complain about being tired, but yet they're still pushing boundaries because they want to do well. And that's completely understandable. But at what point do you stop? Do you wait for burnout to happen before you realize that this is not going to work long term? And that's where I step in and help people to to start making those little changes 
re and and this is the interesting thing in my work is the smallest thing can make the biggest difference yes yeah i think sometimes people just say to themselves well but i want to party or i've i've got to get that work finished i can exist on less sleep i'll be okay and they're so worried that the changes in their lives are going to be so big um the changes they're going to have to make are going to be so big that it will mean that it will yeah will affect what they're doing and the way they are and as you say small things can make such a difference and also what's really interesting uh, interesting in the dynamic of the work that i do today is that i often surprise my own clients because they think that i'm going to change their entire life around yeah but what we actually do is work with what they have because you got to start with today you got to start with what you have today and if that means that you have to go to work stay uh late at work or you have meetings or you perhaps you need to take clients out for dinner then that's what we got to work with yeah. you can't work with this ideal of what it should be we got to work with what we have yeah and i think that's the bottom line is let's not be delusional about it right which totally well yeah. then because no one's going to buy into it are they are they going to just feel frustrated and and what they won't want to do it so mm. i help my clients maximize their lifestyle of course that means sometimes making changes but it's their choice yeah. not me pressuring them into something that they don't want to do so yeah. you know uh, we often talk about early bird or night owl waking up early or going to bed late it's often a lifestyle choice and neither being a night uh, a night owl or an early bird means that you can't have a great night sleep you can so do you do you get people to identify that, yeah what they need for themselves do you get them to look at what kind of person they are um as you say early bird or night owl do you get do you work with that and do you also um get them to recognize how much sleep they need as an individual because we're all different absolutely and i think that is one of the core messages that i i talk about even when i speak is because a lot of the general things out there are general you know go to bed at 10 and get 8 hours and that's going to be fine but actually more and more you see that there is no one size fits all Mm. you have to look at your personality you have to look at your your own way of how do you enjoy life is it is it enjoyment for you to go out in the evening and have dinner with friends because if it is then you probably not going to enjoy going to bed at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock right yeah exactly so i work with the person and i think that's the bottom line because if that person really understands what their sleep requirements are around their lifestyle then they're going to do much better long term and my goal is to give them long term solutions not a not a quick fix because quick fixes don't really work no no you're right and i and I, yeah and i think it is recognizing that some people just don't learn about themselves do they they don't really focus on what it is they need what what kind of person they are and what they need they just say well that's what i've got to push through whatever but they're possibly fighting against their body yes and i think it's it's a it's a fine balance between um often my clients tend to be quite driven in all sorts of different ways like they don't have to be driven in work but they they driven they they've got something that they really want to achieve and you see that oh i'm just going to push through the next 3 months and then i'll rest but actually they might burn out halfway which yeah. means that the project doesn't get finished or they don't achieve what they initially thought they wanted or it gets delayed which then causes frustration so one of the things i i i tell my clients and i work with them to achieve is rather than functioning at 100% all the time function at 
all the time consistently, which means if something like an emergency happens or, or you might pick up a cold or something that takes you out of your day, you're not stretching. You have that 20% to work with. Mm. And, and I think this is what I see a lot today is people literally going through to the 100%. I'm just going to push, 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 push. And I'll get it done. And perhaps they think that's the only way to get it done. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's actually much better to function at a less intensity uh, at, for example, eighty percent. That means you can always deal with extra. You at the end of the day, you feel like, okay, I've got half an hour. What can I do? Rather than I have run out of time. Yeah, and I think that's that's where the the those pressures are on us. I think where we feel we've got to perform to such a degree, it's either um, imposed on us if we're employed um, or if we are small business owners like ourselves, um, then I think it is a case of we push ourselves because we want to, we are driven by, by the, our passion of helping others and, and yeah, you're right. It is that case of just push, push, push. And then as you say, you run out of steam and, and then you just feel deflated because you haven't, yeah, you're feeling exhausted. You haven't achieved everything you wanted to. Yeah. And it affects every part of our lives, doesn't it? Including our relationships. Absolutely. And so much relationship. I mean, at every level, Friendships, business relationships, meetings, um, partnerships, um, marriage, you name it. I mean, sleep is, sleep affects everything. Of course it does. Yes. Because we're all our, our cells are repairing and rebuilding whilst we're sleeping. We need that. We, and some of it is processing as well when we dream, isn't it? You know, there's that yes. to it as well. So it's very valuable and people sometimes feel, I haven't got time for sleep, but yeah, if <laughs> you haven't got time not yeah. to sleep. Absolutely. And, yeah. And, and what do you find? What, what are the issues that you find that, that sleep, um, lack of sleep, too much sleep, sleep issues, affect, how does it affect your, the people that you see? So let's look at the negative side of things first. Obviously, lack of sleep. Um, people get more irritable, uh, definitely moody. But again, it's not just that emotional side, bit, but it's reacting to something that happens. So we tend to react more negatively when we don't have as much energy, energy to deal with something. Yeah. And that tendency becomes more frequent, which means our lives seem to be going more on the negative side. And the way I say seem to is because it's just because it becomes a vicious circle. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean it's actually negative, but we're reacting to things more negatively. Um, the other side I often see is relationship in a sense of... Um, not feeling that they have the time for someone else. And that could be, you know, friends, family, uh, a partner, a wife, husband. So you've got all sorts of levels there because they always feel like they haven't finished something. Mm. So they, they keep fo focusing on, on completing, could be work related, but it could be other things, other projects as well. So then it's less time for those very precious moments with our loved ones. And taking the time to go and have brunch with a friend or, you know, have a date night with our husband, wife, you know, partner, whatever that is, that might be, or a new date. Um, and that really um, changes our days and how it feels and how much we achieved at the end of the day. Um, and then the positive side, obviously, when somebody sleeps really well, their world tend to slow down enough for them to be able to deal with things much better. And we talk about emotional stability. We talk about 
being able to make decisions faster and better, a way of the pros and the cons of a certain situation, um, have the patience yeah. to, to get through something, um, less judgment to ourselves or towards ourselves. Because mm. when, we, when we really rested, then we don't feel this kind of lack of time all the time. Yeah. So I often, when I talk to my clients at the beginning, I often tell them that it might not seem that way, but I will, we will give you back time. Because when your world slows down a little bit, it feels like it's more time. Yes. And I, I think, I think that's such valid points. I agree with you. And I think what I find is, is with uh, clients I work with that, they're affected because they're either suffering from depression or too much stress and they can't, they can't relax enough to sleep. Their minds go round and round. They ruminate constantly. Um, or if it's depression, sometimes they'll sleep a lot because the body's just said, that's it. I've had enough. Mm-hmm. Or they just can't sleep or their sleep is erratic. And, that, as you say, that affects every part of their lives then because they can't focus on anything else when they're feeling like that. It takes them over and it certainly affects all the relationships they have. I, I find concentration, if I'm talking to a client who's constantly, they're so wound up, it's like, you know, someone's got a, a, a key and, and wound overwound a spring and then they're... Sorry. I'm talking to them, but their minds, they're somewhere else and they're, 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 their mind's gone to something else and then they start talking about something else. And just to tell them, just can you take a breath a minute? I want you to stop a moment because your mind is, is all over the place. Yeah. And so, yeah, I agree with you. This sleep thing, if people would only recognize that more as to what the issues are and, you know, just acknowledge, as you say, and then we'll get time back. Because they will feel calmer, more rested, happier in every part of their lives. Yes, and it's, but sometimes, you know, what I notice um, with people that I tend to work with is that it, these things don't appear overnight. It chips mm. away day by day, week by week, month by month. And you get to a time where often when I have my initial consultations with people, um, it, we look back at how long has it, has this existed and it's years. Yeah. So, and, and some of the research that's recently coming out, they look at longer term, uh, projects where we monitor someone's sleep patterns over a period of years. And you can really start seeing the pattern there. Mm. And, and I think this is what's happening is often we don't recognize it's happening because it just happened little by little by little. And then when we then get to almost burnout, then we recognize how it's been consistently a problem for years. Um, And I think as as human beings, we sometimes just get on with things. And that's a good trait, providing (laughs) it doesn't end up with us being burning out, right? Exactly. And I think when something becomes a habit, then it becomes the norm. Because you've always had that an issue, you'd say, well, I've, I've, I've always had a problem with sleep. But that was because it's just become your norm. And, and so many people talk about being tired and it's, it's almost socially accepted, especially in the UK, right? And so it's almost that people think that there is, Either people think that it's not as bad as it is. So mm. the I'm fine. I, I struggle, but I'm fine. Or that they just power through. Yeah. They, they don't even think about it. And just that's what it is. And that's what it is. But actually it isn't. And, and just like at the beginning, we said, there's so many little things that people can do that do that completely transforms their sleep. And, and, we can do something about it. There are mm. so many different ways of improving sleep, but the person has to choose to do something consistently. 
Just yeah. because you tried something for one night, it doesn't mean it's gonna, it has even had a chance to work, right? Um, so these are the kind of conversations I have with my clients when we begin. It's, it's stick with it. One great night's sleep is easy. Consistency takes time. Yes. And I, I'm just chuckling there, Beatrix, because um, when clients come to me and they, they, things aren't working straight away, and they oh, you know, but nothing's happening, nothing's changing. And I say, well, okay, so how long have you been, how long have you been dealing with this problem? How long has it been around? Oh, well, probably about three or four years or something. Okay, so you think you're going to resolve this in three or four hours? Yep, unfortunately. <laughs> some kind of normality. You know, if you've suffered with something for several years, whether it's a disagreement, you know, you're unhappy in your relationships or, or you're just feeling depressed or anxiety, whatever those issues are, if you've had it for that long... <laughs> Come on. Yes. Yeah. We can't have things resolved instantly. I think we were talking earlier, weren't we, about yes. this instant gratification society that we live in. Yes. Um, I want it and I want it now. But that's not how things work. We have to accept that it's a process. And I think the other thing as well is often, uh, and I want to be kind of careful how I explain this is taking responsibility for it too. So um, first of all, deciding that that tool or technique or exercise you're doing is truly working for you as a human being, as a personality type. Yeah. Secondly is doing it consistently enough for it to make a change. And this is where sometimes it's interesting to see the smallest thing working out because for example, I also I, I often talk to clients about different ways of switching off. And everybody thinks switching off means doing yoga and meditation and, and all that kind of uh, sort of more meditative and, and stillness. But actually, a person who is high energy, who is, a, who is somebody who generally finds it hard to sit still if i make them do meditation they'll go crazy like they just they have to have a phase that they slow down a little bit yeah. <laughs> before they can enjoy the meditation or the yoga and some people don't enjoy it at all so we've got to find something that works with the purpose of the exercise slowing down but works with their personality so often instead of meditation i'll tell them Listen, go sit in a cafe and just watch the world. Like you don't have to sit cross-legged and, you know, listen to a tape. You can literally just, just sit by yourself on a bench in a cafe for 20 minutes, not touching your phone, you know, not engaging with things, just, just th letting your thoughts run and having that time to just think and slow down. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. And I have a, um, it reminded me of a couple I was working with. Um, she, we were doing some relaxation for her and he was sitting in on it. Um, and she really buys into it. And, but for him, he was pacing up and down. He was kind of scratching his head. He was pulling faces. He really could not buy into it at all. And that was fine. It was just acknowledging for him he, that would not work for him. But that wasn't the point. I, do, I was doing it. I was doing it for her. And just if it worked for him, then that's fine. But he could also see how it was working for his wife. But, yeah, it was just so interesting having a couple there where one, yeah, they could really zone out and the other one was, I can't do this, I can't do that. So, yes, I, you're right. It's finding the right vehicle. And I think also this leads very nicely into sort of relationships and how sleep dynamic works within a relationship. Yeah. Because I think sometimes people expect that just because there is love or there is care or there is intimacy, then that means, you know, you can sleep in the same bed and it's all going to be great. But often you bring in two different individuals into a very small space, which Definitely. is a bed, right? 
And when that happens, you kind of really have to look at the two individuals and how they work together. So, uh, you know, I often have this conversation with my clients about relationships because I also, as a sleep coach, need to know what they have in their life. Because having, for example, a new relationship, that can cause sleep disturbance because there's suddenly somebody else in, my, in their bed that has their own routine, that has their own little, perhaps maybe annoying things or not so annoying things or exciting things. It can be both annoying or exciting. Um, and then you have someone in, in, in a more established relationship where they feel much more at ease with each other, but yet still they're two different individuals. And then you have long-term marriage where you've, you know, they changed over time. Their sleeping pattern would have changed over time. They might have, and, and I often have that one, one of the generally more men, but women snore as well. You know, one would become maybe someone who snores and then the other would feel annoyed about that. And you, so you really have to work with the couple dynamic too. Mm -hmm. And then you've got another level here where either the marriage is breaking down or there is a loss um, or there is some sort of a trauma or anything like that. Again, when, when the dynamic of either a loss of a partner happens, then again, the bedroom changes. How the bedroom felt before when you had your loved one uh, lying next to you and then suddenly you don't, changes the meaning of the bedroom. It, yeah. it becomes a painful place rather than a joyful place or any, anything in between. Anything in between depends on the kind of relationship. Yes. And as that brings something to my mind that I tell my clients as well, suggest to them, don't make your bedroom a place of war. Don't have your arguments there. Just that will be awful because it should be a place of peace and tranquility and love Absolutely. and all of those nice things. It shouldn't be a, yeah, a war zone because then no. how are you going to sleep? How are you going to care for each other? If all you've got are the memories there, every time you go into the bedroom, you get that sense of, um, and, and, you know, at upset and distress and, anxiety all of that it's just no so yeah you, yeah that's that's a huge thing isn't it and different sleep patterns because yes. if you've got an early bird and a night owl and then you get two people coming together and they say well, we need to go to bed at this time well that might work at the beginning of a relationship because obviously you want to be together and all those hormones are raging around your body yes but after yeah. that let's look at the reality of it but then that can create problems in the relationship can't it because they say you don't go to bed with me at the same time or all of that and it's again yeah that's such a big thing Beatrix yeah and I think what's really interesting recently um I've done a we put together a documentary when we interviewed people uh, on the streets of London and one of the parts of the documentary is is this really sweet couple probably in their mid-30s and as I was asking the questions, they, they both individually answered and they didn't realize, truly realize how different they were and how the girl thought that the boyfriend just found it hard to get out of bed, but actually he was really struggling. But he didn't quite share it with the girl for various reasons and you, you know, why would you? You just, again, you just power through. And what was really funny at the end when we had a giggle about it is that we went through this and, and they suddenly understood each other much more because they communicated oh. and they explained, you know, this is what's going on and that's how I'm feeling and that's how sleep makes me feel. And basically the guy said, sleep is a nightmare for me. I'm not looking forward to it. I don't enjoy it because it doesn't really... I'm not getting the quality of sleep that I would like. Mm -hmm. And at the end, um, he turned around and he said, this is like a therapy session, isn't it? But 
it felt like to them because they suddenly were being prompted to communicate. Yes. Right? And I think so often couples will assume that because yes. that is their map of the world, then their partner's map of the world is the same. And they don't check it out. And then because habit, not wanting to upset the other one, whatever happens, the per that other person doesn't speak up. Absolutely. And, and they miss each other. And yeah, it, it can really affect relationships, can't it? Yes. That's a lovely think, story. Yeah, it is. And it was, honestly, when you go up to people and just randomly interviewing you, you never really know what to expect. And, and as it was unfolding, I was just so happy for them because after we stopped the filming, um, we basically had a, a short conversation. They said, you know what? I, we never thought, we never just really talked about it. We just got through our days and individually we did what we thought we could the best way we thought we could. And we just never really talked about it. And and this was a great opportunity for them to really have that conversation. And I I I mean I am hundred percent sure that now it's going to be more of a let's work together. Yeah. And and help each other. And now I understand why this is happening, rather than perhaps be a bit grumpy about it or upset or feel like the person doesn't love another mm -hmm. and the, the little kind of negative feelings that assumptions can bring. Yeah. Yeah, it does throw out everything. But but yeah, so that's an interesting one about sleep because I don't think people always do talk about their sleep. That's not oh. a big one. Um, as you say, they just power through it. That's it. Yes. And so how do you think that that effect, you know, the intimacy and sex effect um, sleep in a, a relationship? So that's another really interesting one. Uh, because I tend to come across two different types of people. One, um, that uh, intimacy and it's lovemaking. And the other side is just sex. Yeah. So the two has different meanings for people generally. Yeah. Um, obviously, depends on circumstances and kind of what age and so on. But um, the bedroom in my eyes, are for two things, sleep and lovemaking or sex, whichever way you call it, because that's the place where it tends to happen. Yeah. Yes, we can sleep on the sofa, so can we have intimacy on the sofa, but generally speaking, it's pretty much in the bedroom. Um, and that has such a big effect on sleep because either – it's a new relationship. It's very exciting. You know, we're getting to know this new person. It's this buzz, which means that we might not be able to see, sleep because of the excitement, because of the buzz. And that's just one, of my, one element of our life. Or it's that it's an established relationship. And then it again changes the meaning of the bed. And sometimes, again, what's really interesting for me to see is when established relationship or marriage gets into a stage where perhaps the people are going through different hormonal changes, which means they might not having sex as much or, or you know, it's changing. Again, it can change the sleep because people then start thinking about, well, what does that mean instead of having the conversation? Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you say, there's the beginning of the relationship. You've also got um, hormonal changes. Well, the woman, when she goes through her uh, menstrual cycle, you've yeah. also got pregnancy yes. and um, new babies. Gosh, because they're yeah. such, well, they disrupt our sleep completely. Um, and then when the woman goes into um, the menopause, so you've got that whole thing going through, let alone all the daily stresses of life. But yes. Um, yeah, I totally agree. So, yeah, please, I interrupted you there, but I just was thinking about that matrix. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. I mean, and and I think one of the other interesting things that I'm starting to uh, be quite curious about is I tend to speak to quite a lot of recently much more um, sort of men 
who's finally really able to have these kind of conversations, partly uh, driven kind of like the mental health uh, campaigns. And I also have the conversations with the, with the men and they explain how they change too. And so they go through their own sort of hormonal changes. Yeah. And if it's, if it's um, actually stress that's causing them the change, then again, their body changes too. And yeah. then you put the two people in the same bed with their own frustrations, with, with their hormones going all over the place. And again, you've got to talk through. You've got to express what's happening so the other person can understand, can support. Um, and one of the big parts of my work is asking clients how supported do they feel? Yeah. Because it's a very important part of healthy sleep. If we think that we are the only people who can solve something and nobody's helping us and we don't have the support system in place, then we're going to feel more under pressure. But if you have a support system and if you can communicate uh, to your partner, friends, family, that you are going through this, this troubled time of either insomnia or relationship related problems, then the sleep takes a different role you can improve it much more effectively and, and easily. Yeah. Yes. I think communication is, is a big thing. It's a big thing throughout oh, I, every part of our lives, every relationship we have, whoever we meet. That assumption creates so many issues. You Absolutely. just assume what the other person's thinking or what their beliefs are doesn't it create a lot of problems? And, and yeah, if we're not, you know, it could be that um, we've had a late night or we've had a stressful day and we just assume that our partner will understand that we're tired. We don't say, I'm really sorry, I'm very tired, it's, it's because I've had a stressful day. It's, it's assumed that, that your partner will recognise that. Well, they don't always... And that's when that creates real big problems yes. too, doesn't it? Absolutely. So you should know. Well, um, no, because my mind was somewhere else. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I think, you know, the sleep, that's why I love the work. Because sleep it has so many levels of depth of why something can keep us awake at night. Why we might not be able to sleep really well. Um, or why we can, actually. Because there is, there is often, during processes of working with a client, they suddenly surprised that they had a really good night's sleep. I'm like, great, let's look at why that happened. What are the elements that, yeah. that tick those boxes? Because when you have the elements of how you manage to create a great night's sleep, you can recreate it again. Yeah. And being uh, aware of what's happening uh, is going to help to build that. Yes, I think too often we look at what's not working rather than what is working so that we can replicate it. Absolutely, and I think um, that's a big part of the work, yeah. generally speaking. So, It just came to mind, well, how, do you, how do couples with different lifestyles work? You know, like if they've got different like shift work. I mean, I think shift work must affect an individual at sleep greatly, but what about when they're in a relationship? So that's, um, that tends to be a very interesting dynamic. Um, I often tell people that it's okay to sleep in different rooms because, and that is in some of the responses are interesting because often people think they can't, but actually if, Sleeping in different bedrooms for the purpose of sleep brings the best out of the individuals in that relationship. Then when they do end up spending a night together in the same bed, will make things so much better. Yeah. Because, the, because again, the meaning of the bed has a positive um, meaning. It, it's going to be joyful. It's going to be great to sleep next to the person you care for and you love. Um, 
But if it causes stress, because you have different shifts, can you find a way to sleep in separate, separate bedrooms so that you can both have a restful night's sleep? And, and I think that sometimes when you introduce that to clients, they're like, oh, that's just like, I can't do that. I'm like, why not? If that's going to bring the best out of you and it's going to bring the best out of your partner, why not? So, I, think yeah. it, I think it must come up for people that there must be something wrong with our relationship if we sleep in different beds, different rooms. I think that's, that, it's the beginning of the end. It's uh, all, of those, all of those messages, I think, come up for people. And I think the key here is obviously make time for the relationship. Do sleep in the same bed, you know, as a, you know, like plan that you, you're not drifting apart, but yeah. you're doing this for the purpose of just sleeping well. And, and, yeah. and interestingly, this, this situation often brought up the communication with the partner and, and, and the client that I would have generally female clients, um, she would, I would encourage her to then have a conversation with the, with the partner, husband, boyfriend to say, listen, I'm struggling here. What do you think about it? But I want to make sure that you don't feel that it means that I don't love you. I do. I really do. But I think it might be a great trial period until I get over my sleep issues so we can reconvene in the normal space. Yeah. Or actually they decide that actually the best thing to do is just to help each other and do it together and not sleep in different rooms. But then again, because you enroll the two individuals, then their perception, their assumptions will change completely. Mm. So two ends, it can work and it depends. I mean, sometimes it's good to sleep in different rooms for a week until somebody settles their sleep to a level where they, they're at least a level better and then they yeah. can return sleeping with the other person. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, again, it's one of those conversations couples tend not to have. It's uh, just doesn't get, just doesn't, yeah, just doesn't come out at all. It's, um, I think it just feels like I said, it, well, there must be something wrong with the relationship, but in actual fact, if you can settle your sleep, you're doing it to improve the relationship isn't, isn't that wonderful oh, yes absolutely and i think you know you start talking about these kind of things together and start solving them together it it i mean i see it in relationships of my clients or or even when they get into new relationships as we're working together because they communicate well, because they understand themselves more, they know what their needs are, they can communicate it yeah. effectively, which means the other person gets to know them better for long term. So yeah. it's, I think it does wonders. Um, and it's really lovely to see that when that happens. Yes, uh, it must be really, really good. I, have, I think when I see the magic working in a relationship and getting them to communicate better it is just wonderful but yes I think you're doing some great work too I think that must be yes. very rewarding and just nice to see that couples um yeah they're, they're working together and helping each other Lovely. yes absolutely and it, it's seeing somebody transform some parts of their life and 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 it just brings joy and and then you get emails six months later you know, or a year later, and it's just like, wow, you really helped me a lot. And and it's, it's the most rewarding thing because they'll yeah. never, often the work that I do is so deep work um, that people then able to go back to it whenever they need it. And I think that's the other key point here is our sleep changes all the time. Yeah. But the skills of developing good sleep are the same. So no matter what changes, when you have the skills and the tools and the techniques and the exercises to change your sleep once, even if it goes a little bit not so ideal or a little bit bad, 
you have the tools and techniques to then sort it out yourself again. Yeah. And that's a wonderful thing to do. And well, that's one of the reasons I now do this all the time because I love seeing that. And I, I know the difference it made in my life Yeah. and what difference it makes in clients life. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, that's really great. I think, yeah, it, it's so nice to, uh, to be able to help people because I think the work both of us do, that has a ripple effect. It not just affects the one person, but it affects their relationships, their friendships, their work, everything that, that they come in contact with because Absolutely. they're making the changes to themselves. Just and often, often then they'll, when they've learned something new, they'll share it with someone else and that person, you know, it, it is, and to be honest with you, that's how my business has built because people have seen what I've done for myself. They were interested. I started sharing with people the things that I've done and that's how it became a business really so yeah. it is definitely a ripple effect that you know we all struggle with sleep in different parts of our life yes we all do it yeah. just depends what extent to what extent so yes. and addressing it and noticing it and doing something about it absolutely yes yeah is there anything else that you 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 wanted to say? I mean, you've, we've talked so much about so many things. Is there anything else that you wanted to yeah add to it? I think the the bottom line is, and and this is one of the things I say all the time is, some of you might be listening and thinking maybe my sleep isn't so bad, but it's starting to trouble me, or actually you're really really struggling. Mm. but perhaps you haven't yet reached out or the third scenario where you have tried and tested a few things, but not, nothing seemed to have worked. So the main message I want to share with you all um, who are listening is that don't give up whatever stage you're at with your sleep disturbance, find tools and techniques, practical tools and techniques that work for you. Because once you have those, you'll have them for life. Yeah. And when somebody sleeps really, really well during the night, their day is so much more fulfilled. And they're able to handle their challenges better. They're able to communicate better. They're able to form more wonderful relationships. Because... With better sleep, you become a better person. And that's what I would like to leave all of your listeners with, really, uh, because that's what I've experienced in my life and in my clients' life, seeing the examples. That's such good advice, Beatrix. I've really enjoyed talking to you today, and I just want to ask, whilst all the details will be in the show notes of this episode, the podcast how also people listening how can people get in touch with you so my um my work is twofold one is raising awareness about sleep sleep issues and practical tools and techniques and i do that through speaking both corporate workshop and public events as well so if uh, if you might be just interested in finding a little bit more about it, then check out um, upcoming events that I have. Um, the other is obviously I work with individuals. So I um, currently offer a complimentary sleep coaching session, which is basically a conversation. Have a conversation, um, finding out whether or not you have a problem, whether or not I'm the right person that might be able to help you, whether or not Maybe you've got a medical problem that's causing your sleep issue. And really helping people to find out what the root of their sleep problem is during that call. So that's uh, another way. And to find all of that information, you can visit my website, which is thesleepdeepmethod.com. And 
if you're just interested in my work, there is videos on there. I do have a YouTube channel and you can find me on social media channels. I, I'm, I'm present pretty much everywhere um, because I'm really passionate about the work and I put content out that people can watch as well. So find me. That's uh, quite simple. And you'll put the links in there anyways. So. Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Um, I've just just so enjoyed talking to you and learning more about what you do, Beatrix. And uh, thank you so much for your time and, and chatting with me. Yes, thank you. I really enjoyed it. We covered so many different things. It was wonderful. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so um, it's just saying goodbye for now. Thank you. Goodbye. I really hope you enjoyed the podcast and you can find all the details of this episode in the show notes. If you've enjoyed it, then why not leave a review so that others can find the podcast more easily? You'll find all the details that I mentioned in the show in the show notes, as well as links to my website where you can find lots more information and links to other resources. My contact details are there too. If you'd like to receive my newsletter, which contains articles and my latest offers, then why not just email me? It's wendy at yourrelationshipspecialist.co.uk. Details are in the show notes.